Wondering Watchers. This is a review and flip through of Teeny Tiny Tarot and Mini Divi by Holly Luso Luazu. I'm not sure, but she goes by Holly Oddly. So I'm going to go with that. Um, this is not an unboxing because I've had this for a few months. Um, we can call it an opening of the box. Um, this box here was um, included with the decks and I think it's great. It's a um, magnetic close box. It's got some cool things on the inside. This is called the Lucky 7 box. The idea is to have teeny tiny tarot in here with uh, six um, mini divvy sets. This set here is about uh, ghosts. That's the theme of this deck. So here's the box. Inside it says, what will you do once you find what you seek? A little hand and little eyeballs here, an eyeball. Um, if you don't, do not know, um, Holly Oddly has some um, more scary, spooky, odd designs. I, I'm not, I'm not sure. Creepy is the right word because it doesn't creep me out. I think these are kind of adorable, cute. Um, but you can see here, um, the side has a skull with a fish in it. This is from the Page of Cups. Um, cups are represented by skulls here. Pentacles are represented by eyeballs. Sticks are wands. And where do they have it here? Oh, here it is. The end is the beginning right here. You can see sewing needles are swords. Um, inside the box, it says everything you seek is inside. So that's what it says there. And then on the bottom, you are full of good fortune. So let's see if you can see that there. All right. Um, what I think is pretty cool is it also comes with this wooden coin that's like yes or no. Um, I have not been able to really successfully spin it how it goes for me. Um, I'm not great at flipping it either, but maybe some other people have um, better, uh, what's this, index finger thumb maneuverability. But uh, when I got this set, this coin was missing and I just kind of was like, hey, wrote a note on Kickstarter for it and about that I didn't get it and Holly immediately responded, said she'd send it out and I got it within a few days. So that was pretty cool. So here um, I'll be doing a close-up flip through of the, these cards here and I'm going to do not an initial interview, I've already done that. But I'll just do a follow-up interview to kind of see what's going on with the cards um, as of right now. But in terms of what I think of this, I think it's pretty awesome that um, it fits in this little carrying case. Um, plus, with the uh, mini Divi decks, I think there there's six, five more that are supposed to come out. Um, when 
it's empty right now. I've been just putting other like travel tarot and oracle size cards in there. Um, so this is great for when I'm out of town and want to take some tarot with me. Um, in terms of the other mini Divi decks, I joined an Instagram live with Holly Audley and she said she's working on the new decks um, around, it's I guess it's almost April, but I think she said March would be when we would see them on Kickstarter. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but in terms of the themes, I believe it's omens, dreams, messages, opposites, and oddities. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. I'm excited for that. So we'll go ahead and do the close up flip through. And then when we come back, I'll close it off with a follow up tarot reading interview of the cards. This is the flip through of Teeny Tiny Tarot by Holly Audley. So here is the tuck box on the back. It says the Teeny Tiny Tarot is a 78 card deck of all the things Holly finds wondrous in this world and beyond. HollyOddly.com. Right there. Okay. So, let's put this to the side here. And because I've already been using this deck, I just put it back in some order. I think it's really awesome that they have, that Holly put this thank you card. Thank you for your support. And this card as well says, Holly, oddly, I'm assuming it's Lesoy, Leso. You guys know, you can let me know. Is an illustrator who creates from the study of her 1890 Victorian home. She's often inspired by cemeteries, ghost stories, strange places, and nature. All right. So we start off with the fool that has a long tongue eating this fly. There's the magician. The empress. He's pretty sneaky looking there. I mean the high priestess. This is the empress. Looks like they're guzzling on a lollipop, a blow pop. There's the emperor, which if you have a cat, um, you would know that they rule the household. Hierophant, lovers, delicate, tender. There's the chariot. Strength, the hermit, the hermit's big lantern, the wheel of fortune that looks like a makeup um, compact there, justice, the hanged man, and I like the numbering at the top the cards. Death, this is not the end. And I like the little skull hound there. Temperance. I really like how it's just the this these bottles. Um, in the traditional Rider Waite Smith deck, the temperance has those two goblets, chalices, where the liquid is kind of flowing from one to the other and it's being held at this kind of um, 
angle that really there's no way that gravity can get one cup's liquid to the other. And here it seems even harder with these um, small bot bottle openings or Here we have the devil. Let me move some some things around here. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. We have the devil. And it's really interesting to think about what the white area is supposed to indicate. Um, because here's this cat that's curled up that was the emperor in the arms of the devil or is it the empty space of the devil is the, the brown part I don't know something to think about the tower everything you thought you knew mm -hmm. the star Moon. The sun. This card somehow makes me think of like high school cheerleading. I wasn't a high school cheerleader. It's just that flag for some reason. Um, maybe because my school was uh, the mascot was the flames. There's flames. Kind of really no. I have no idea. Judgment, um, a coffin with a skeleton, and a banjo because, of course, and the world coin. So now we start with the Ace of Wands. Two. The Three of Wands in this little, like, sailboat. Schooner? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know sea technology, terminology. Um, sounded cool. Alright, so here we have the Four of Wands. It took me a little while to figure out where they are, but they're at the tippity top teepee thing here. Well, it might not be a teepee. It just looks like a circus tent. Um... Five of Wands, we got the Six of Wands, the Seven of Wands. So yes, these this deck is um, pippish, but I do like the images here. I really like the brooms, the Eight Brooms, Nine of Wands, and the Ten of Wands. That really, it does take, takes two hands to handle the Ten of Wands. You can't do it with one hand. All right, so we have the Page, Knight of Wands, Queen of Wands, and the King of Wands. So now we are in the cups with the skulls as the cups, ace, two of skull cups, three of skull cups, somehow this four of cups makes me think this person has been drinking all night and they're just like, alright, finally, I just can't no more. The Five of Cups, Six of Cups with the little teddy bear, adorable. Seven of Cups. Eight of Cups in the long and windy road. Nine of Cups. And ten of skull cups. Mm 
Page of Cups. The Knight of Cups delivering a urgent message of love, creativity, imagination. Queen of Cups. King of Cups. And here we are at the Ace of Swords or uh, sewing needles. Two sewing needles. These three here really jammed into that um, heart cushion. Here's the four of swords, four of needles. Looks like eyelids that are closed with the lashes there. Uh, five of swords drawing blood even. Six of swords or six new sewing needles. Seven of swords. Eight of swords, lots of uh, puncture and droplets of blood there. Nine of swords. Ten of swords or sewing needles, and that looks really painful. For some reason, even more uncomfortable than looking at the ten swords in the back of somebody because we all know it's fake. This is obviously fake as well, but it just takes more to grasp the sensations. Page of Swords with the mini sewing book. All the knowledge of sewing needles in there. Knight of Swords, and you can see the horse that is uh, being, what's the word, the crocheted, macrame, I'm not sure. I don't know a lot, <laughs> unfortunately, about a uh, sea or crafting that involves sewing needles and thread. There's Queen of Swords, King of Swords, and we are on to the Pentacles or the Eyeballs. Ace of Eyeballs. Two of Eyeballs, and it looks like a face. That's so great. Here's three of Pentacles. Three in pentacles and squiggly eyeballs and other things. There's the five. Six of pentacles. Seven. Eight of pentacles, which is all about skills and talents for making eyeball soup. Nine of Pentacles, Ten, Page of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles, and the King of Pentacles with a pentacle as a third eye. Here we have the mini Divi set of 30 cards here. And here's the tuck, tuck box. That must be Holly kind of peeking on over. And on the back, it says, these ghosts have a message for you. This pack of divination cards delves into the spirit world. The cards range from eerie to humorous and each has a fortune written at the bottom read these cards on their own or with the teeny tiny tarot hollyoddly.com made in china 
Okay. All right. So let's open this up again. I've been using these, so uh, they're not in any particular order. And there's not a need for a guidebook. So again, another thank you for your support card. And another card that says, Holly grew up with scary stories to tell in the dark. She followed this up with Tales from the Crypt, a healthy dose of Stephen King and any scary movie she could rent from Blockbuster. So, here we have Rattling Chain Ghosts. It's time to be heard. Don't be silenced. The Grabby Ghost. It's out of your control. Let go. You can see there's, looks like hands grabbing feet from under the bed covers and the bed covers have rockets. Um, is that like maybe Saturn and the moon? Pretty cool. Ghost of the Fog. Shape it, shake up your routine or the fog may settle. Angry spirit. Some things are worth your anger and some are not worth your energy. Very true. Horde of ghosts. You don't have to go it alone. Choose a quest buddy or three. I guess that's when you need to, um, go on a, uh, maybe some type of challenge, some calorie challenge or exercise, or even a walk around the, um, neighborhood. All right. Lonely ghost. Just be. We need to feel these feelings. That's for people who, uh, I guess don't want to feel things. It happens. When you stub your toe, when you watch some cute, sad, abandoned pet video, something like that. The hungry ghost. Some questions have no answers and the hungrier you become, the more you starve. This kind of makes me think of if you are doing tarot and asking the same question over and over again. The sheep ghost. Don't let imposter syndrome get you down. Friendly ghost, your kind heart will show through. That's so sweet. The cold spot, if something feels off, it probably is. It's like this chair was meant for the high priestess. The severed head, now is not the time to lose your head. It's time to plan. The ghost town. Maybe where you're at doesn't serve you anymore. Move along. Kind of like Eight of Cups vibes. Judgment. The ghost family. Stick close to the ones you love for maximum comfort. Forest spirit, seek nature. It will, in turn, make you grow in the best ways. Ectoplasm, it's okay to not have all the answers. That's true. Does it feel like that all the time? But it's true. Victorian ghosts, many greats live in the past, but it's not where you belong. So sometimes this uh, is kind of like the Six of Cups. Maybe even Five of Cups. The ghost phone where you answer the call. Definitely judgment vibes. Woman in the water. 
it's time to travel far below the surface, there is so much more than what meets the eye in this situation. Okay. And there is orb ghosts. It doesn't matter if others don't believe that's so true. Your truth is your truth. Seize the light ghost. Seek a higher truth. So this kind of um, hierophant, the hangman vibes, maybe even the hermit. Here we have the poltergeist. Uh, oh, you have incredible power. Use it. This is a great ran rendition of the chairs from the movie Poltergeist. I think that was probably one of the first scary movies I saw. Nope, nope. I think when I was like three or four years old, my dad took me to a drive-in movie to watch Friday the 13th. Um, head scratcher, that's for sure. All right, uh, the corner ghost. Come front and center with your ideas. Here we have the shapeshifter. Things are not what they seem. Mm. Maybe similar to the devil card, maybe the moon card. Here we have the crying ghosts. This will pass. Definitely five of a cups vibes. The closet ghost. Seek out the inner truths that long to be awakened. Um, hmm. Maybe the fool? Inner truths that long to be awakened. Maybe, maybe eight of cups. Um, judgment card. The soaked ghost. You're not stuck. You just need some new inspiration. Yeah, it's kind of like the um, movie The Ring, Ringu. Uh, I think it's the Japanese movie. So basically, this ghost just needed a new uh, inspiration for her haircut. The Vortex Ghost. Don't allow chaos to suck you in. That's true. It's like every five in the deck. Five of wands, five of swords, five of cups, five of pentacles, even um, maybe even some knights. All right. Doesn't realize ghost. Your lack of awareness is killing me. That's great. And it says on the paper, news, man, does it say man fa falls to his death? Ah, so maybe this is kind of like the reversed fool. Yeah. We have the child ghost. Your inner child is holding you back. I don't know why it is, but ghosts that are children are super scary. I think it's, I think I've heard that um, uh, the more negative entities, demons, like to um, appear as children because they seem innocent. Not for me, I'd be like, you're a child ghost, you are suspect right off the bat. Okay. The ancient spirit tried and true may stand the test. And these are the 30 cards in the mini Divi deck. So the card stock on the teeny tiny tarot and the mini divi are exactly the same in terms of the 
is it? I don't know. It's a little more bouncy than this one. Is. Um, but it's meant to actually be mixed together for those of who want to do that. Um, and so for the mini Divi deck, um, let's see how we can shuffle it. A little, a little difficult. Let's see about rifle shuffling the mini Divi deck. Yeah, that seems to be okay. Um, let's try with teeny tiny tarot. I guess I could take these out. Alright, so here is the entire deck. Kind of fits in the palm of my hand like that. Let's try to do some rifle shuffling. I don't think I can do the the bend fold, but the rifle shuffling seems to work pretty well. All right, and then the let's see here. There's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just the what is this called stacking method, and then in turns. And the folding in side fold. It's a little more difficult with the side fold. Okay. Alright, so brings us to the back of these decks. You can see the artwork here on teeny tiny tarot with the skulls and the swords and I guess those little things are sewing needles and an eyeball perhaps in these hands right here kind of look like a fire so for the mini divvy it's pretty much the same. Pretty similar. Um, say pretty much exactly the same. Just black and white. And then the borders around here inside. So here is the wooden coin that came in the set. You can see here it's the top has an open eye that says stop. On the sides there are two cups. At the bottom it says no with a wand and then ponder and another eye. So on the flip side it looks like two hands with the thumb and index fingers kind of pinched together saying yes, then continue at the top and act at the bottom. So trying to spin this, I've had some difficulty. Let's see if I can actually do this. Nope, let's try again, no. So it really depends on your finger and uh, index finger thumb ability and maybe even the type of uh, the thickness of the wooden coin that you have. One more time. Nope. Uh, maybe throw it into the box, shake it up, flip it in your fingers or from your thumb. I can't really do that either. Wait, one more, one more. Let's see. Nope, that didn't happen either. Okay, well, still a nice concept. 
So now we're gonna do an interview of this deck. It's not an initial interview. It is a, what's going on with you now interview. So. This cardstock is no, 350 GSM, I think. And the dimension of the cards are like, I think it was 2.28 inches by 3.4 something inches. You know, hand size. So here's the more shuffling. These cards are kind of difficult to shuffle, but you just find what works. I do not tend to use these decks together. I tend to keep them separate. So let's see here, these are for the mini divi. I'm gonna pull a card to see what uh, the teeny tiny tarot deck has been able to help me grasp since I've been using it. We have Victorian Ghost. Many greats live in the past, but it's not where you belong. Can you see that? Nope, there. You can see this one on the flip through. Uh, it's the Victorian ghost. So basically, um, I think this deck is gonna help me to recognize that um, I need to be looking more about the future and not the past. It works for me. Okay, so, and then, since I have them in order, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time shuffling these. But I think I'm just gonna ask about um, the deck's current strengths, its current limitations. Um, a card that I need to, or I should have a deeper understanding of, and a way that I should be using the deck more often. So, let's start out with strength. Um, okay, so strengths is the four of, man, this light is just like bad with the, uh, this kind of deck here. Um, four of sewing needles or swords. What if I get that close? Uh, okay, you can see it in the flip through. Um, in terms of its weaknesses, we have the magician here. Right. card that I should have a deeper understanding of. King of Cups. And a way to use the deck a bit more. It is the eight of wands or eight of brooms or eight of sticks. Okay, so in terms of its current strengths, um, basically I feel that it is relaxed. It's recovered from, you know, whatever mental stressors that it's been through. Yeah, this is really not good in terms of like bright lights. So apologies for that. 
Actually, so, why am I apologizing? It is what it is. You can see it in the flip through. Okay. Um, and then for the weaknesses being the magician, um, I take that it really, it isn't the thing that manifests um, anything into reality except information. It's always our choice, my choice on how to pursue things and even how to interpret things. Um, in terms of the King of Cups, me needing to have a deeper understanding of that card. Um, I'm interested to see what that's about. Um, basically, Cups in general, it's the water element is like more receptive and passive and kind of flows. Kings are um, generally associated with the element of air and that's associated with um, thought and it's more active. So actively flowing thoughts. Hmm. Well, I usually think of the King of Cups as someone who has uh, stable emotions, able to connect with people, it's compassionate, understanding, supportive, loving, not afraid to show support. On the darker side, um, I could see it's someone who might drink a little bit uh, too much to cover up those feelings and possibly a little bit emotionally manipulative. So there's some view of the King of Cups that you have. Um, I'd love to hear you can share that with me since this deck obviously wants me to have a deeper understanding of that card. And then in terms of how I should use this deck in the way that I um, I guess that I'm not or should do it more. Um, I think it's really just saying, use me more. Like, like let, let's make this happen. So I'm hoping this gives you a good view of Teeny Tiny Tarot, Mini Divi, The Lucky Seven Box this coin here um and to close off i'm going to be asking this coin if i'm going to ever master the spin on this ready um stop no ponder so there's the answer we'll see you next time take care